late, so um, I will have to rush through a lot of the slides, uh, and I'm sorry they don't show properly, but everything is going to be online. So um, I'll cover a little bit with uh, what happened with the Google Summer of Code. So essentially, um, I was received uh, 18 slots from Google, so this meant we could take 11 students, and the problem is we got 84 proposals, so 87% of the students couldn't be selected. And the final slot breakdown was uh, that OWTF and ZAP got four slots, and then you can see all the projects there, the academic and mod security and PHP security project dot one. Um, in the Google Summer of Code, the overview for all WTF students is that uh, 14 showed interest. Uh, from those, only 79% or 11 bothered to submit a proposal. 16% uh, of, uh, of OWAS proposals were for all WTF. Uh, we got five in the top 11, but we lost one student because he was accepted both by OWAS and another organization. And in the end, um, we got four students. So, some people were kind of surprised because uh, OWTF is not as well known as, for example, Mod Security, which is a project everybody knows about. So, we are wondering, well, why did so many students submit? And some said it's because it's Python, others said because they like the project that was being proposed, or they saw it's a project they can do with their skills, or they, uh, someone said that it's the best project to learn about other tools of security because OWTF tries to cover uh, all the OWASP testing guide and the penetration testing execution standard, so we run a lot of tools, and that means like the, the focus is really broad and you, can, you get to play with, with other tools. And, uh, another funny one was that uh, another organization didn't reply, so the student decided to, to send the proposal for OWASP because we were quicker to reply or quick feedback, encouragement, or advice. Okay, so these are the four projects that I'm going to cover briefly. Uh, and a big thank you for all the um, dedicated mentors that uh, stepped up to, to mentor with OWTF, because I, I can only mentor like up to one student. So this, each mentor can only mentor up to one student. So we needed like one dedicated mentor per project, and, and all these people uh, stepped forward to help. So big thank you for them. So let's have a quick look at what OWTF is. Essentially, the goal of the project is to try to use the Pentersis time as efficiently as possible, because what happens is we have a very limited time to test. So uh, the way we try to do this is uh, separating tests so that you can start without permission. And we'll explain this a little bit uh, later. Through automation by launching a bunch of tools and uh, making human analysis as possible, as fast as possible. So the approach is uh, running tools, running tests directly, so with it, when we don't really find a tool that does something specific from the OWASP testing guide, then we try to write our own tests. And then it acts as a knowledge repository. So it's not just about automation, it's about trying to help the human exploit the problems so that we can show impact to management, right? If, if we just give management a, a black screen or a text file, they typically don't get the problem very well, but if we can show impact, then uh, the issue is going to be more likely to be fixed. And then we have an interactive report. So this is so the cat is, um, about helping the human analysis. But I'll explain this in a few seconds. So there's three main plugins. There's web, there's net, and their auxiliary. So the web plugins try to cover the OWASP testing guide. The net plugins are uh, a little bit like MMAP scripts, so they try to probe for network services. And auxiliary plugins are a little bit like the MSF CLI uh, way of calling Metasploit. So it's just uh, shell one liners to do some stuff. For example, this, this is an example to run a targeted phishing attack through the social engineering toolkit. So things like this. Um, and this is, I said before that um, WTF tries to gain to help the human, the, the pen tester, um, to test security as fast as possible. And one of the ways to do this is to start testing before we have permission. And this is possible because we divide the tests into passive, semi-passive, active, and then this external and grab. So passive will essentially not send any traffic uh, against the target. So we are basically testing through third-party sites. Semi-passive, we send traffic, but the traffic is normal looking. It's like a normal user uh, visiting the site. 
and then uh, grep plugins are essentially doing searches on http transactions and external plugins are meant to help the human exploit the problem so the OWTF report, with that, which I'm going to show in a minute, is um, meant to emulate the thought process of a chess player. So when a chess player plays chess, there's a bunch of moves that uh, are legitimate, but there are many moves that don't, main, don't make any sense because they're going to lose quickly. And uh, what they do is um, chess players analyze in two sweeps. So there's a first sweep when they look at all the possible moves and from those they try to reduce um, the, 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 the scope, the breadth of that, to just three or four moves which are going to be the most promising, the, the ones that look the most promising at, at first sight, and then those are the ones that they are going to analyze uh, more deeply. So the reason for this is that most people in chess, in life, and in testing security, uh, when they see something bright and shiny, they just go straight in one path without looking at the whole thing first, so we all had this problem. If you have tested security, you have been here. Like you saw something that looked really promising, at the end it was not exploitable, and you had something that was better and was just uh, beside it, and you didn't even look at. So it's, it's the same problem we have. So this is what we're trying to do from the report, and I'm going to show a quick demo, um, hopefully. Uh, this, well, I'm going to show the second one because we're short on time. The second one is a little bit. Oh no! Well, whoops. I'll show the first. Sorry. Um, hopefully. Okay. So essentially. We're running all WTF, we're running just the passive plugins, but the pen tester doesn't work here. This is the, the command line, we just run all WTF from here, but the pen tester works on the interactive report. Um, so we're focusing on the target, we see all the OWASP testing guide tests, we are using the filter, just showing the passive plugins, and then we're just reviewing uh, the information here and uh, ranking it. So this is the first sweep of, a, of the chess player, right? So we are discarding a lot of things, these are Google searches that we do with clicking this open all in tabs button. So we are just marking the test as passed because we didn't find anything useful. We did open all in tabs again. We are closing all the tabs, all the Google searches that didn't yield any results. So we are marking all those tests as, as passed because we found nothing useful in there. And now when we uh, run this test, we find that there's a um, Sitefinity administrative interface. Right, so now this is interesting because um, if we can get in this way, uh, this, this can be a big problem, right? So what we're doing is we are taking a screenshot of what we found and then you can click on edit here and you can start uh, reporting. Now the important thing to note here is that this is all passive testing. We are not touching the, the target at all, but we are already starting reporting and we are already uh, doing a bunch of tests. So we can paste the screenshot in there and we can start like writing down um, what we found, that there's admin an administrative interface here, that this is the URL for it. Um, okay, so I'm going to, to write it now there. So you can see like I'm starting like writing the, the, the finding, right? So there's an administrative interface. We still don't know if we can get in that way or not, but we are already writing this down. And now, a thing I want you to pay attention to is that now when I click on the on the eye here, this is going to take me to show the external plugin. So this has a link to the White Hat page for uh, the Badmin project, which is essentially a website that has information about um, the most popular CMSs. And in here, we are grabbing the information for Sitefinity with the default administrative password, um, there's uh, as well a, a link for exploits against uh, Sitefinity. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm noting the things to try, right? So when we have permission, we can try these default credentials for this CMS and see if they work or not. And we can start preparing all the attack. And this is the, these are the published exploits against that CMS. So you can see here that we are using the um, OWASP testing guide as a checklist. We are marking very quickly what is not interesting for us. 
and I'm really not trying to exploit the problem. So in here, I'm just marking this as uh, interesting, right? So potentially exploitable, but we are not trying yet. And I'm still trying to finish the first strip. So I'm st I still have other items to look at, and I'm just marking them as past because I find nothing interesting in there. So that's the idea of, of OWTF. Right, to coordinate the human analysis with the automated tools and third-party sites and uh, proof-of-concept exploit code that is uh, publicly available. So now uh, we can use the filter and look what is the most important thing that we found on the first strip, and that's there, and then there's a magic bar that you can click, and that's going to show you um, all your findings. These are the human findings um, in the, the report that you started and they are in an easier to, to copy uh, format to the, for the real report. Okay, now um, I think we are going, well, the thing is, then after trying this, after trying the default credentials, just one minute after getting permission, uh, you can get in if they are vulnerable to that, and then five minutes after getting permission, you have a shell. So you, the, the pen tester is using the time much more efficiently than uh, usual, right? Like, uh, no matter how good of a security rockstar you are, there's no way you get in five minutes without preparing, without all this preparation. This second demo I'm going to skip because we're a little bit short on time. Um, and then, well, we got 500, 5,000 euro from, from Brucon and 2,000 euro from uh, Google, so I think the best way to use this money would be to help the students that got accepted and, and keep them working on the project after the Google Summer of Code, but if you have other better ideas, just please let me know. And I'm just going to show uh, very quickly what the status of the Google Summer of Code projects are. So with the reporting project, uh, the main issue was that the old report was uh, a little bit ugly. So it's difficult to understand and all this. So we had a bunch of goals, make it more intuitive, easier to use. And a very important thing here was to move all the HTML into template files so that a designer can help us. And then we chose Twitter Bootstrap. We chose Jinja2 for, uh, the, as a templating engine. And um, we did um, a survey to, to gather uh, community feedback. And this was the chosen prototype, so it looks hopefully a little bit better. This is what people voted as the, um, yeah, as the the, mo the better looking uh, report. Okay, so this is still being on the works. The, the this prototype is still being implemented, and a very important feature as part of this project is that uh, we are going to have default plugin vulnerability ranking so that. Um, even though we always give the human the possibility to override um, the importance of the findings, which because it's, that's a very important concept of, for OWTF, we want to give some guesses, automated guesses of uh, potential rankings, so that if, for example, you have 50 websites that you are looking at, you know which is the potentially weakest one as soon as possible through the automated results. Uh, then there's a, one of the other projects is uh, multiprocessing by Ankush, and here the main goal was to reduce scanning time and to port the OSCP scripts into OWTF. Uh, these were the scripts that I used to pass the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification, which is, which is a 24-hour hacking challenge, and I did this back in 2008 where I had very little idea about security and uh, using the, the scripts, um, despite being so, so weak, I could get a 100% score in this test. So they were pretty useful scripts. Um, we chose multiprocessing for running plugins and threading for other smaller tasks. And yeah, I'm going to skip this part. And then the thing with the network plugins of the porting these, these scripts is that they work with waves. So if you use OWTF and an IP address, by default the waves are going to be first scan the top 10 ports uh, and try to find vulnerabilities on those, then the next, 100, the next 90 until the top 100 most likely open ports, then the next 900 until the top 1000 most likely open ports. So we only scan each port once, but uh, you are going to have results much more quickly, right? How many times have you heard 
that while I was uh, waiting 10 hours for the MAP scan to finish. So what we're doing uh, with this way, and this was one of the key factors why I got the 100% score in that 24-hour hacking challenge, was that I had results in five minutes. So I had the 24 hours as time um, for myself to think of how to exploit everything. I had the information much more quickly than, than other people taking the test. So this is, this is the idea with OWTF as well, because the ultimate goal is to make um, security testing as, as fast as possible. So network plugins implement vulnerability probing of network services like FTP, SNTP, S, uh, SNMP, and all these other services. Um, and yes, we, we will try to improve performance a little bit more. And, yeah, and I'm going to skip to the proxy project, which was a very impressive project. So essentially, what we want is to have more uh, information for, uh, to, to analyze and to proxify tools, because we are running a, a bunch of tools like Skipfish, W3AF, and, and, and a bunch of other tools. So what we want is have the information that uh, all those tools gather so that we can analyze those for, with grep plugins to look for um, all those HTTP transactions, can we find any vulnerabilities on that? Right? And, uh, and some of the features like uh, the proxy cache to, to avoid redundant requests. So uh, the research that this student did uh, was very impressive. And in the end, we chose uh, Tornado as the framework to write this Python proxy. And um, I'm going to skip that. And essentially, we have SSL man in the middle working. Um, we have the proxy cache working. And this, the race conditions for uh, saving files in the cache is also working. And the bottom line in this project is that the OWTF proxy is now the fastest Python project, uh, the fastest Python proxy ever created so far. <laughs> so. Uh, in the benchmarks that the student has done, we are faster than Twisted, we are faster than Man in the Middle Proxy. So uh, he's done a really impressive job, and yeah, and it's, it's quite great. Um, yes, and one of the things that Simon talked about before was this plug and hack interface. So we're going. Just finish right now, or? Okay. Yeah, and so this support is standard, and then. Yeah, and then the other project is the testing framework. So in the end, in here, um, what we want to do is to focus the, the, the project into functional testing. So testing, does the um, output of OWTF, uh, for example, if we run a plugin, is it really what it should be, right? So that, that is the, the focus of the project now. And yeah, so writing functional tests for to see if we are really covering the OS testing guide and uh, try to cover the penetration testing execution standard. So we are writing tests for those. And another big one in this project will be automated continuous integration. I cannot make justice to the awesome work all these students did, but um, that's all the time I have. So if you, I don't know, if you want to have any questions, you can. I have to leave now for my flight, but I can give you a business card or something. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the speaker. So do you have to...